Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guests today are Susan Bennett Fisher and Martin Fisher of Body of Nine. This is going to be a great conversation. We're talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. I love these two human beings. Welcome to the show, both of you. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, we love you too. We love you too. (laughs) So we're going to be talking about the body of work that you are doing, which is really transformational in my opinion. And I am pretty well-versed in a lot of different types of modalities. And there certainly are a lot of different ways that we can learn about ourselves, um, find out who we are, what makes us tick, why we operate the way that we operate. But the work that you guys are doing is unique because it really helps us to understand not only ourselves, but everyone around us, our, our spouse, our children, even employees or clients. Um, and if we're real about this, there is that human tendency to think that other people think like us or to be really dumbfounded by why some people behave the way that they behave. Mm-hmm. And you exactly are right. mystifying this. And this is really, really valuable stuff. So I'd love for you guys to um, take a moment and share with our listeners, what is this work that you guys are doing? It was discovered a while ago that even though there are seven to nine billion people in the world, that there are actually only nine physiologically different kinds of people. And as well as there only being nine, the numbers don't repeat in families and the numbers therefore are misunderstood. And what I mean by that is each of these nine different body suits, if you will, earth suits, comes into us at birth. So when we're born, we have one of the nine active. And while you can learn all of them, the one that is yours guides and shapes your physical and spiritual reality. What you care about, how you want to process data, how you want to form relationships, whether you use your eyes to make relationships or not. So our nature is born in us. And the major difference between what we do and a lot of the business tools that are out there for identifications is that we start with the body. And then we go into, based on our knowledge of the 8,000 people we've worked with, we can tell people what their nature is and honor them for the first time. Because as I mentioned, our parents are not like us. So no matter how much they loved us, they didn't grow us the way that perhaps would have been honoring for us because they tried to make us like them because they knew how that was. So we can see objectively how this can be problematic. Uh, (laughs) There are so many ways that it's problematic. (laughs) And now here we are. We're adults, well-meaning, well-intentioned adults, genuinely at our core, good people. And we are sort of just bumping around in our relationships with other people. And that is obviously challenging, not only in our families, like with our significant other, with our children, but with our employees, with, with colleagues, with the rest of humanity. (laughs) So um, I'd love to talk a little bit about this from that perspective, like understanding this even at a high level, can help you to be a bit more objective in our relationships with other people, not so triggered. Because when you understand why someone operates the way that they do, or why there may be a tendency to have um, conflicts with certain people, we can process that emotionally and objectively in a much more empowering way. So now let's talk a little bit about how do people identify what is their number? 
how do they go through this sort of discovery process and begin that journey? And then what does it look like after you identify how you, how you operate, who you are? Well, that was a big question you just asked there. It was. I know. <laughs> I didn't crack. say take... I was going to make this easy, did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are a five, six, seven combination between the three of us. Natural number one is natural number five. I have six and you have seven. Five, six, and seven is this incredibly dynamic com- combination um, for transformation. And so that we're actually approaching this conversation from a very big picture makes a lot of sense. So I'll try to break it down a little bit. The first step is to find out your natural number. So what part of your body is active? Where and how do you balance who you are? What does it mean for you? So the getting to know yourself, again, at the level of your nature. And a lot of us, when we get identified, feel very validated and seen. And that renews our relationship with ourself and gives you this opportunity to start to love yourself. Then people get curious about, well, if I'm like this, how am I different than the others? The more you dig into this, the more astounding how fundamentally different we are body to body. And that affects so many aspects of how we integrate, uh, how we connect, communicate, uh, think. So much of our being is actually driven by this underlying physiological nature. Yeah, no matter where you are on the, is work-life balance a thing? we are spending a lot of our time with the people we work with. And there are many, many aspects of that interconnection that we do at work with our comrades, with our clients, with our management team that are directly impacted by the communication. You know, we've all done DISC, we've all done Myers-Briggs, and this is an actionable system that lets you have a physical response and a physical way to get back to you being calm in the middle of a meeting. We'll cover that, I'm sure. But just knowing that some of the people you work with want to form a relationship before they want to start talking about work. They want to meet out and say, well, how are you doing? How was your weekend? That kind of thing. There's another group of people. They're just going to fit in. Let's get something done. And all these are completely easily determined. You can easily tell by knowing people's natural number. Some natural numbers that just want to have the conversation first, want to build the relationship, then let's do something together. And for example, like in realty, Real, and if you're a realtor, then some of your clients don't care about the relationship. They just want to have you sold my house. The other half is, well, they want to sell the house, but they really want to hang out with you and get to be friends with you first. And this happens at various levels in everything we do, business and personal relationships. So we were talking about progression, um, which is first you get identified, then you get curious about everybody else. And as you learn, you begin to be able to modify your experience of other people. So you can learn to activate all nine centers in the body, which when you do, enables you to be with somebody much more authentically. So when we're with you, I know that if I stay connected to my forehead, my third eye, that ability to stay open to possibility, we might go down a a road that we never anticipated going down in this conversation. But if I didn't do that, we might get stuck in the five, six place that Martin and I live in. So this gives you so many tools and a context for understanding all of the nine. So everybody that you work with, everybody that you love, each one of us has this natural number. And once you know yours and theirs, all of a sudden there's this possibility for communication that wasn't there before. And And, tolerance. And tolerance. And also as an organization, if you don't get input from each of the nine natural numbers, Mm -hmm. you're going to miss stuff. Right. There's a wholeness to bringing all nine natural numbers together at one time. So when you're trying to create something, a company, uh, do a project, when you are consciously able to bring all nine together, that opens another avenue for possibility. An example that I can give straight away is that we were working with an organization down south and they were a bunch of very smart, very talented, very passionate people, but they didn't have anyone with your natural number, natural number seven. So when they had an idea, they got stuck in that idea. They weren't able to bring more to it and see other ways of doing things. And this, I think, is something that many, many businesses get stuck in, is that they're missing a view. So they're not able to see the entirety. They're missing some part. Of right, and without, and without knowing that you're missing it, you, yeah. you're, you're, you stay where you are. Yeah. If you're missing seven, you're actually missing the energy of change and possibility. Optimization. And optimization. And that's a big deal to be missing in an organization. 
And so that's true of every one of the natural numbers. And when it's not present, that function doesn't happen. And so, you know, like I'll go back to the combination of the three of us. None of us are actually, we don't put relationship and connection first. We put this conversation about the possibility of changing the world. And changing first. the world. Yeah. yeah. And, we, you know, we like each other and we can enjoy, but we, we don't start with connection. It's not where we start. Whereas if there was a one, two, three, or four here on our call with us, it would change the energetic dynamic of the connection. Martin and I have to remember, it's like, oh yeah, we have to stay connected with the three of us so that, you know, we, we are synced up. So each, each number brings something and your body, you can learn to activate the other so you can bring more if it's not present. And just as a demonstration of this, I'd like to suggest maybe you and I could just do four for a second, slow things down and people can just see how everything <sighs> shifts. And so just by activating another number, we speak more slowly, we're more connected, mm -hmm. and we're looking and feeling our emotions much more than working through our head and solving the problems that are out there. And so you can see our faces have changed, our body posture has changed, our tone has changed, our pace has changed, and then if we go back to who we are, bang, straight back to something else. So, so it's, it's a very body-based system. Very actionable yeah. as a result. Now, the way that you have laid everything out allows it to sort of click for people. Now, as a business owner, it's pretty obvious that if you have better relationships with your clients, with your customers, with your employees, that is obviously going to help you in your business but you shared something that took it even above and beyond those just basic sort of fundamental benefits. And that was when you bring the right combination of people, that can be a game changer in your business. Yeah, and, and get the right energy in the right role. We hired a, a publicist who's a natural number two. And in three months of working with her, she had established so many relationships for us on behalf of us and included us in those connections so that we were now on 30, 40 podcasts in two or three months where we had not gotten a single podcast in the year prior. And so bringing that beautiful ability to create relationship into the process of creating relationships with people who have podcasts because the reality is it's all about relationship. If we weren't in relationship with you, we wouldn't be on your podcast, right? If we didn't have that underlying connection. But there's an important disclaimer here. Every person, every employee can pretty much do every job, but how are they going to do it is going to be very specific based on their natural number. Assuming, and, and how much they enjoy it yeah, will also be. Assuming they're in their natural purpose. Right. Another example would be, one of the natural numbers, natural number one, has an ability to make and design beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And they're great for building brochures and all these kind of things. But because they are so used to and know what beauty is, sometimes it's hard for them to be done because there's always something to make it more beautiful. So knowing the people that are working with you helps you support them and right. helps say, well, this is great. It's actually good enough. Thank you very much. Rather than or it's like, more than good enough. Yeah. It's perfect just as it is. You know, how do we, and to helping people to bring their strength consciously in connection with the others, understanding the, uh, there, there are classic challenges between any two natural numbers or three natural numbers. And there are classic, ch uh, beautiful things that happen. So knowing those can help you to, uh, short circuit the challenges and anticipate results. You know, I mean, sevens, for example, feel really generally misunderstood in the workplace. They want always to do the best for the company and they always want to make things better, and they're always looking for process improvement. And sometimes people are like, why are you stirring the boat? It's working fine. So that, you know, sevens get misunderstood, but they've got a drive to make things better. And if you look at someone through your lens, if you were doing something, it would mean one thing, but the person that's doing it, I will bet, doesn't mean anything like you, you think it does. Right. And that opportunity for misunderstanding is huge. Life is hard enough as it is without misunderstanding just because someone's doing something based on what they need to do versus what you need. Right, right. Because if you've got, you know, if you've got one person that comes in there, one, two, three, or four, they want to create, they want to connect first thing in the morning. Whereas the five, six, seven, eight, or nine might want to just sit down and get right to work and connect later. 
you know, I'm sorry, I want to finish this first. Don't come over here and bug me with this, you know, connecting thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, but it's also a way to change mm -hmm. because, you know, I started in business. I, you know, I was at uh, Silicon Valley for 30 years, went through all those companies, Oracle, Yahoo, the rest of those things. And I started the computers because if I didn't like what they were doing, I could turn them off. And interacting with people was a real problem for me. I didn't actually enjoy it too much. Now, with the ability to actually activate the other centers of my body, I actually enjoy being with people more than I do working on a computer, which is a huge shift for me. And it's a great, you know, if you're a business owner, you're just starting out with a new business, you've got this wonderful idea, and you know how to do it because it's in, in your natural purpose, it's built into you. Then you start build, building it, bringing other people, and it's like, well, how do I relate to these other people? Because I've got this vision. This helps you connect mm -hmm. to everyone around you much more authentically. And it helps them to understand where does this vision come from? Because sometimes we don't understand like, well, why do you even care about that? And so this, this ability to communicate and to have your vision or whatever it is you're contributing understood in the context of all of the natural numbers, it makes it more receivable. It becomes a gift rather than people being confused and saying, what is she doing? Why is she doing that again? She always does that. It's yeah. so irritating. <laughs> nope. So, yeah. right, yeah. you know, I mean, I could irritate the daylights out of Martin. And I do <laughs> regularly, even though he knows about me and my way the of being. That she gives them. Yeah, it's right. a gift. Pe the people around us in a company, if you're even halfway lucky, are here to give each other the gift of working together to make something happen. You know, the, the, I think the days, certainly, hopefully, with people on your podcast, the days when people turn up because they just need a job and they, you know, they want to get bread on the table. Well, yes, that's an important part of life. But if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're basically throwing half a third of your life away. And the people you're doing it with. Yeah. You know, I know when I look back at my career, when I worked at a, a company, there was one guy there. I was like, what is going on with him? I do not understand. We couldn't talk to each other. And it caused a lot of problems in the organization because we were both relatively high up in the decision making process and we never approach decisions in the same way and as a result we never could resolve the problem um which was mostly probably communication based as i look back on it now but if i had known his natural number i would have been a lot more tolerant of his approach and vice versa and, vice versa. and it was it was one of the natural numbers i didn't know very well when i look back it's like oh yeah that one wasn't familiar to me so i wasn't sure what he was doing we're familiar with the ones that we were raised in, you know, in the family. So we're familiar our parents and brothers and sisters. But if if you've never had a lot of exposure to one of the natural numbers, that may be very foreign to you out in the world, in the workplace especially. Because usually there's diversity in the workplace of natural numbers. If you're lucky, you need to have all nine in the company. Just yes, to... and most do just by sheer volume. Yep. Um, although sometimes people tend to hire the same natural number over and over again for particular roles. We've seen that in, in a medical organization, in a hospital, where all the nurses were natural number eights and all the doctors were fives and all the IT people were sevens. And that's like all they had in this hospital. Right. Well, obviously yes. they had more, but, right. but it's the, 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 there was a the, propensity. Yeah, there are certain things that come more naturally. And, but that doesn't mean it has to be some of that. Right. Right? And in fact, sometimes it's best not to, because again, you get this whole group thing where everyone's going down this path because they all think the same way. And sometimes you need a little Some bit diversity. of diversity to get right. things. You know that as a seven. There's a time to you know all march forward the same direction. There's a time to say, okay, what else is there? One of the things that I want to bring up because I know how people's minds work. We have this tendency to doubt, and so. I just want to say from personal experience that when you guys were able to identify my natural number, I, it, it was incredibly accurate. So the, the body of knowledge that you have acquired from all of your years of doing this has really um, allowed you to be very, very accurate mm -hmm. in how you help people to see what are your gifts? What are your, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? How do you think? How do you feel? How are you wired? How do you handle this? How do you not necessarily handle this so well? And, um, you know, we love to understand ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. right? There is something sort of um, enjoyable, I guess I'll say, I'll use the word enjoyable about identifying yourself, understanding yourself. It's like, hey, I like that about me. I'm so glad that you noticed that. <laughs> yes, that, that, that was my response when I first got identified. I was like, oh my God, this is everything I love about myself that nobody ever seems to get. And, and it gave me so much permission to be fast, powerful Susan. And, and it gave an opportunity to me to love myself again, because, you know, most of life had just beaten that permission to be me out of me. And this was like, okay, you need to be you. It's not like a neutral. If you aren't you, you have to show up and do your job. And that was fantastic. Yeah, someone described it the other day that we were seeing the secret her. The one that she knew about herself, but that but nobody, nobody else seemed to figure see it out. Yeah. And it's the same thing for you know with people of your natural number. There's, but we don't make this stuff up. We get what we get from having worked with eight thousand people and listening to them, and drilling down to what are the fundamental core parts of these people. Skepticism completely encouraged because this is new information, but it's been around a long, long time. This is not new to humanity. It's been known. You know, the Egyptians knew about it. And it, it's presented in most of the personality models out there. There's some aspect of this reality, right? If there are nine physiologically different kinds of people, which our research shows to be very true and very repeatable, then it would make sense that you could then take, you know, personality developments and nurture and all these other things and categorize them. And that's what the other systems do. They look at how do we behave? What do we believe? And then we try to try to categorize on those aspects that's a lot more variable because that's affected by our nurture. This is your fundamental nature. Your body is equipped in a very particular way, moves in a very particular way, thinks and responds in a very particular way. And we start there with the body. We say, okay, I look at your body, Alicia. I see you have a, a more prominent forehead. You have a longish shaped face. When I push on your shoulders, your body gets strong in this very um, straight position from your forehead down to your back heel. That's attributes of seven. Then we can, we've talked to a thousand sevens out in the world and we've asked them how they describe their reality and distilled this very specific description that is true for all 1,000 of those people. So the accuracy, as you say, comes from the purity of the category. Most personality systems out there ask a lot of questions and you use your mind to answer the questions which means you answer how you want to be, how your mother thinks you should be, all these other different ways. So there's not, it doesn't have the same purity in the research data because the mind is involved. We start with the body and go back to the behavior and the understanding and the presentation. Whereas the other ones start with the presentation, the behavior and move back and they never ever get to the body. They never take that into account. So that's the difference really and why this system is so accurate. And then we give you an actionable thing to do with your body. Each of the natural numbers has a posture associated with the activation. And it turns out when we align our bodies, head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, that allows the most uh, efficacious flow of energy in our body. So if we just, I'll teach a little exercise. We call it our collapse and lift. You sit on your sit bones, collapse your body. Whew, just relax everything. And then take a breath and lift and it naturally lifts from your movement center so you naturally easily reactivate your body which brings you more presence more able to be, be with other people and it lets your body do the work because yeah. you know we have a mind each of us has a mind and sometimes the mind gets in the way if we listen to what our bodies are saying then there's a lot more wisdom in our bodies than many of us are actually able to hear yep so trusting that wisdom trusting that our bodies know things that our minds can't really make sense of, and not to question your own wisdom, to not disbelieve yourself, because that is a really important aspect, especially running your own company as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. Believing in yourself is such an important part of being able to keep moving forward, because if you doubt yourself, everybody around you is going to doubt the process as well. So Absolutely. this gives you that connection back to your strength, your power, and it also shows you where you need help. We need help from the other eight. Because the thing that you do, you can do easily. Right. Whatever your natural number is, your natural purpose and your ability to do, and whatever you do comes very easily. And the other eight things, 
you're not going to do as well, even if you try really hard, even if you learn to activate all the other eight. It just gives you a tiny glimpse. Right. Knowing where, knowing what you don't know is actually kind of an important thing for an entrepreneur as well. Yes. yes. Where were the holes that can be filled in? And that's five wisdom there. If you don't have a fire around to tell you what you don't know, you can get yourself into trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah, Everybody's got to give yourself useful. a five. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out you need all nine. Yep. They're all fabulous. You know, you have seven gives that ability to for change and growth. Six helps with the right path. How how do we move? Keep it moving. Moving. How do we move forward? How do we get bring energy into the process so it moves forward? So each natural number has a very specific purpose. I love this. Now, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. And now I want to speak to both of you as the owners of your business. Mm -hmm. So one of the themes of this podcast is everyone, regardless of where they are on their journey, we're all human. We're all doing our inner work. We all have areas where we need to grow and things that we have overcome on our journey in order to get to where we are today. So I'd love it if one or both of you would share a mindset obstacle that you had to overcome in your life, in your business, in order to get to where you are today? Well, for me, uh, and this is common, which is um, a mindset obstacle that you have to overcome is often very related to your natural number. So as a six, one of the challenges is to slow down and wait for information to come in. Sixes tend to get ahead of the energy and try to push things. And when that happens, they get a lot of resistance in an organization. So in order to be effective, sixes really have to expand their chest and be very present and really pay attention to the timing that's needed for their wisdom to be heard. So for me, that's something I had to work on. And I, and I think for me, because of my technical background, the, the there's a certain element of not good things that happen with success and lack of privacy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, being successful is a good thing, but there are some downsides to being successful. Part of the requirement to be successful is the ability to connect with people. And so my mindset was very much, well, can I just sit in my office and bury my head in the computer? And the answer is no, I need to be able to be working with Susan. We need to be able to work together and we need to learn to trust each other, which we do. We've been married 14 years now. And so the mindset to get over is, you know, I can't do it on my own. And it's okay to be wary of the negative of success while sort of being ready to accept the possibility of success. Yes. And also, you know, one of the things that many, many natural numbers struggle with, but is particularly sometimes challenging for some of them, which is to be able to ask others for help yeah. and to receive the help from others. That's a really challenging thing out there. I see it over and over and over again. It's like, no, I don't, no, I don't need help. I don't need help. Well, the reality is if you don't accept help from the other eight, you're not going to be as effective as you could be. The best case, you're only going to resonate with one ninth of the population. That's best case. No matter how big your market is, one ninth of that market is nowhere near as good as half or nine ninths. Yes. And to genericize the, the, the question is like, if you believe it's important, it, your, you need to do that piece. That's yours. And recognizing the importance that other people bring is also very, very important to stay open to. So Martin will say, Susan, you know, you have forgotten this, this, and this. It, you, so you don't have a complete picture. And he always wants me to understand something before I talk about it, even though I might have, you know, have a sense of what direction we already should go. If he doesn't think I've understood it, he will not listen to me. He wants to make sure that I've, I've understood it in the way that he presents it before he will allow me to move forward. And just understanding that, you know, we're different, we need each other, and we need to be patient with the needs of the other natural numbers is very important. Because my role is anticipating what we need. But when is it going to be alive? My plan, I have to plan for what's going to become, you know, happening in six months' time. Because in any business, you have to be looking for the future as well as the current. Like cash flow is king. And so... Planning for what's going to be needed ahead is my role, and then finding out which of the possibilities is going to be the most real is Susan's role. So we have to learn to we, an organization, and, and 
I'm going to go back to one of my early discoveries. In 1986, 96, 1996, I interviewed at a company called Yahoo. You've probably heard of it. And one of the things that was amazing to me was that every one of the upper management team, every one of them had the same vision about where the company was going. And if you don't share that vision as an organization, you're not going to succeed. And you know, Yahoo did fairly well for a while. And so part of being in business together or with a team is making sure you share the same vision. But you can't do that unless you can, unless you can elucidate that vision, unless you can actually have a conversation about what does that vision mean? Because nine different people are going to have nine different visions if they've got nine different natural energies, natural numbers. Or different ways of achieving that yeah. vision as well. So, so it just it sheds a lot of light because it's very rare that you know a whole upper management team is aligned in the right direction. And when you're not, you get such, uh, you know, you can you get lose these energy drains, right? And so, how do we align an organization or a group towards a purpose? This helps tremendously with that. And of course, getting past the well, I'm always right and everybody else is wrong is kind of also <laughs> the other mindset. That, I don't know what you're talking about. And neither do I. <laughs> So, so I think there's, I think every entrepreneur has all these things that they have to work through. Yes. You, you haven't asked this question yet, Alicia, but I, I want to speak to how we run Body of Nine, which because it's very, very different than most other companies. We know everybody's natural number. We understand how they do perform their role within their, you know, how that, how that impacts their role. We make sure that we always bring a component of connection one two three four as well as five six seven eight nine together so i always make sure that each of the natural numbers reviews what we put out so that there's nothing in there that makes that natural number uncomfortable because it's very easy to put something out that seven eighths of the population like but two nines don't and so we bring the energies together and we honor the differences we play with it it's uh we have you know people don't like to leave our team meetings we have these team meetings and nobody wants to end the meeting and, and how often does that happen right that you're in a meeting that you don't want to get the hell out of right <laughs> <laughs> all right so right now there are people who get it and they want to learn about their natural number maybe they even want to take it further and they want to integrate this into their businesses or within their their family for instance how can our listeners connect with you well website bodyofdine.com and go to the start here and that tells you everything that you could do there and how it works we've got how it works uh, but the first step is to get yourself and your organization or your family identified and that could be done online uh, yeah. over Zoom, which is really cool. And we also have uh, coaches and holistic practitioners that we're partnering with who are in our certification program that will can also help with this process. And we really like working with organizations that work with other organizations. Right. Because there are the two of us and you know, there's a fair number of people now in the world that know about this and know how to do it. But organizations that are doing training, organizations that are doing coaching inside organizations, we love to help those people learn as an organization how to take this further into right. other organizations. Right. We know we can't touch enough people individually, and, and we hope at some point to remove ourselves as the bottleneck in that process. Um, maybe by the time somebody's watching this, we've already done that. <laughs> so um, for now, you get identified, then you figure out what does that mean. We have, uh, we Monthly. have classes and, and, uh, and a certification program if you want to integrate this into what you're doing. We also do work work with work groups. Yeah. So you can bring Martin and Susan into your organization. We can identify everybody and get you started with it and then develop a program for how do you integrate this into your business planning. And every month we have a, what we call Accelerate Your... Accelerate Your Impact. Impact program that is a four hour Saturday morning, Saturday two, 10 to two on a Saturday once a month that people can come and learn all about the nine and see what's next. Yes. Because it's a journey that starts with identification. It doesn't end there. It's not like you get your Myers-Briggs type and you're like, oh, well, that was fun. It acknowledged me, but what do I do with it? Eh, nothing. Well, we actually start you on a journey where you can begin to develop yourself, your understanding of yourself, and then understand that gift that you offer. And then it just burgeons into a complete evolution of who you are. I love this. So I have to thank you both so much 
for being with us. I know we just scratched the surface. There's certainly so much more depth that we can go into around this, but I do feel that we've successfully shared um, enough of the high level understanding of this to get people really contemplating some of these, these sort of facts of life. You know, we're not all the same. And when we understand ourselves, and when we understand the people around us, it is going to have a significant positive impact on not only our own lives, but everyone else around us. Yep. Yes, apologize for that phone ringing. I guess the universe is trying to get us to do something different. <laughs> <laughs> well, the universe is saying, all right, this has been <laughs> successful. Let's That's wrap fine. it up. So thank you both so much for being with us and sharing your energy and your wisdom. It has been a fantastic conversation. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Yes, absolutely. It's always Thanks. good to so see you. Anderson. Always good. Yes. And of course, I've got to thank all of our listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not already subscribed, please make sure you do so. Make sure you reach out to Susan and Martin. This is fantastic work that they're doing. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.